Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and in this video I want to talk to you about the RX 6700XT Mining Performance or Hash Rate. The one I got is the XFX Swift 309 and it's a pretty good card. It's a dual slot design. Um, unfortunately, I do not see thermal pads on the back side of the PCB between the back plate and there's a couple of pros and cons with this GPU. So let's get into it. If you want to see live hash rates though, I would say check out my live stream that I did not too long ago. This is just going to be a summary video where I'm talking about what I bump into and the hash rate that I've seen so far and then links to the data. Because as I do with all my GPUs, I will consolidate the data either on Bosscoin Talk or Reddit and then you guys can share your input and your performance as well. To tune the GPU, what I would recommend doing is using the AMD utility. I do like using MSI Afterburner, but just make sure you get the latest version, 4.6.3 Beta 5. Um, the driver version that you're going to have to use is either 21.3.1 or 2, just to be able to utilize the RX 6700 XT. There's not a new one yet, at least of time of filming. AMD will continue to make updates, but I have bumped into the driver issues. Sometimes the driver will crash to a point to where I have to restart the system just to, in order to continue to mine or I would get a green screen and have to restart the system just because I was in a Zoom call or whatever. So there are some driver issues. AMD's driver team is not as robust as NVIDIA, but just bear that in mind. To tune though, you definitely want to make sure you go to the, the advanced section. So you're going to see this at first. This When you go to performance and in tuning, you're always going to see this. Go to manual right make sure you turn on everything that you want to tune for fan tuning for core tuning everything make sure I like to use advanced control but most importantly is VRAM tuning you want to come here because under memory timings there's default and fast to get that extra few mega hash you want to make sure that you're on fast instead of default and I actually show in the data a comparison between default or stock uh, settings versus fast timing now the max memory overclock that we can get is 2150 Trying to go beyond that with the more power tool, unfortunately winds up handicapping a card or locking it down the core to where it's just the performance is just degraded. So until there's a new update for more power tool or red BIOS editor, uh, what we see is what we get. The max we can get is by overclocking the memory and then of course undervolting the core and the voltage. Uh, moving on, I want to talk primarily about the data. I did run some stock tests with Awesome Miner. This is that stock performance out of the box. Um, the key thing here is not all algos are supported. Now, at time of filming, there's only certain miners that can utilize the, the 6700 XT. Um, you can see here in Awesome Miner, for example, they have version 2.49. The latest version is 2.50. So Awesome Miner may not even have the latest version. You might have to go download that and manually install it. Or if you're just direct mining like myself, you could just download it, set up your batch files, and start mining. Um, it does have the most profitable cryptocurrencies, though, that most people are going to be focusing on anyway. So it may not be such an impact. But you can see that Equihash 125, 144.5, uh, 192.7. Uh, of course, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum Classic, Kapow, uh, most, yeah, MTP, most of the algos that are, that most people care about are in here, but items such as Conflux and others are not. So just bear that in mind. I will have this linked down in the description below. There's going to be a link to Voscoin Talk and Reddit where all my data is going to be, but I just want to blow through this real quick. Again, if you want to see the... the hash rate being tested live check out my live stream which is going to be in the description now temperatures right off the bat so the ambient air temperature that i normally keep it in my house is about 77 fahrenheit or 78 and the hot spot gpu hotspot temperature got a little bit uncomfortable for me hitting 102 c at the peak uh the gpu core saw a max of 71 c and the memory only saw a, a max of 74 c and that's with the memory overclock obviously 2150. now if we use the more power tool we need to bear in mind just like the 5000 series that when we use the more power tool and we extend the limits of the memory that the memory is going to get extra hot so this is where we're going to definitely want some thermal pads in the back side of the pcb in case your model doesn't have it but the best hash rate that I saw, and I'm just going to blow through the section here. You guys can read it on your own through the link down below, is 48.7 mega hash, where I bring the core clock down to 2050 core, the mem maxed out at 2150, and the V core down to 950. We saw 150 watts from the wall. Now, key note about the wattage, AMD 
software and even hardware info is software readings and it will not even the miners that ha that report the wattage that you're drawing will not report it 100 percent accurately depending on the algorithm that we're mining i saw a dis discrepancy anywhere from 10 watts all the way up to 40 watts so i measure everything from the wall kilowatts uh, at system idles about 145 and then when we start mining that's where we start to see the numbers i saw 150 watts um, when I was mining Ethereum with Phoenix Miners latest version. Now, I don't know why I have E in here, which is not the right version. It's actually C. Um, that whole nice hash thing was a whole debacle. But yeah, just the latest version of the miner. It's okay. It's legit. Don't freak out. But that's what we saw for the hash rate. Now, mining Ethereum Classic, pretty much the same hash rate um, at the same core and same mem. Now, even though I have the core set to 2050, that doesn't mean that's where the core clocks are actually running. It might be like 1978, 1980, somewhere in there. And even the voltage, even though I have it set for 950, it was only pulling 856, 0.856 millivolts. And that's typical with AMD GPUs, right? Even on the 5000 series, when you set something at a certain core clock and voltage, the GPU is not actually pulling that amount. That's just the, the, the top or the baseline for where it, it likes to stay. Um, mining Kapow for Ravencoin, uh, the best one that I saw was 23.05 mega hash. Uh, again, using the same default that I have set up. We can bring this core clock up and get extra hash rate, uh, but at a sacrifice of wattage. Um, the one that I saw was 160 watts with fast timings enabled. Uh, Conflux, for some reason, this is the outlier here. So for some reason, I tested on MV Miner 36.1, which is not the latest version. However, the reason I did that is because the older version works but the newer version is not supported. And then even with the older versions, when I was mining, I was getting a lot of rejected shares. Again, we're waiting on these minor developers that have created these programs to update kernels, make optimizations to really fully utilize the RX 6700 XT. So bear that in mind, hang tight, be patient. I gotta hit up uh, Andro Crypt because Wild Rig Miner doesn't work either. So not all miners are supported, primarily the Phoenix Miner, Team Red Miner, uh, G Miner, and MB minor, kind of, sort of, but again, a lot of rejected shares. I might have to do some more testing on that. Uh, moving on again, the Team Red Miner, which is uh, version 0.8.1.1, mining Firo, or the MTP algo. Uh, I, I kind of think the third one is the best one. 3.44 mega hash, uh, bringing the core up to 2150, the mem up to 2100. Obviously, we could push the mem up to 20, 2150 if you wanted to, and the core up a little bit. Now, if you try to run... Um, you know high core clock and you bring the voltage too low you're going to get a green screen and driver crash which is what i got i even got a driver crash during a zoom call at stock settings so just bear in mind that amd is still going to be making updates these miners are still going to be making updates and you may have some issues another big pitfall with this card uh, at least the 6000 series is myself who has an amd mix rig i tried to put uh, the 6800 6, and 6700 XT in the mining rig with my 5000 series and my RX 590. The bad thing is, is when I updated the driver, it wouldn't allow me to run the 590. I would run into a kernel error. So the only way for me to run the 6000 series with the 5000 or my mix rig would be to remove the 590, which is not a big issue. So I removed it, but then I started bumping into an issue where uh, the 6700 XT wasn't detected. Then the 6800 wasn't detected so there's a lot of driver glitches that amd is still ironing out um, and we'll see how things go as they progress just got to hang tight there and obviously we're waiting to see if igor's lab comes out with a updated power tool more power tool or the red bios editor gets updated uh the only prog power coin i was able to mine was zero um best hash rate was 19.46 about 20 mega hash uh pulling about 165 watts uh, with G Miner, the latest version, mining Bit Bitcoin Gold, which has seen a, a resurgence in, in profitability, uh, about 54.5. The third setting is about the best one, uh, and we were seeing about 120 watts. Now, that's really odd to me because unlike the other algorithms like Kapow, the difference between my third setting and my last setting was 15 watts, while when we were mining Bitcoin Gold, it was the same wattage. So I don't really think that G Miner was fully utilizing uh, the, the GPU when it was mining this algorithm. Uh, again, 
where this whole point of this video and the data that I put in Reddit and Voscoin Talk is to share with you guys so you guys can also share your data. And I want to see what you're getting with Bitcoin Gold and what you settled on and stuff like that. If I have updates, I will update the threads as well. Moving on to Flux, um, which has forked from Zelle or rebranded from Zelle. Uh, I would say that the, the best hash rate per power draw was 36.6 .6 mega hash, uh, which was the third setting at 125 watts. And then I used a really old XMR uh, version because Crypto Dredge wouldn't work and XMR Rig wouldn't work. So XMR Stack 2.10.8, which is an old version, like I said, um, you know, can see anywhere from 1980 hashes all the way up to 2500 hashes uh, between default and stock. And then the wattages, again, were a little bit off, uh, you know, only showing a five watts difference from the third setting to the fourth setting. Uh, and then G minor can mine zero or echo hash 192.7 at stock settings, we saw 40.57 mega hash. So I will have this base data in there. Uh, what's not included means that I couldn't get the miner to work, even with the latest version. And then I'll also have the picture of awesome miner showing all the various ones at stock clocks. But I definitely want to hear from you down below what you got. If you did get the 6700 XT, the top algos are, are mineable, which is a, a plus. And right now, if we were mining Ethereum, which is the, the most profitable cryptocurrency at this very moment, uh, at 48 mega hash and 150 watts, 10 cent per kilowatt hour, 1% uh, fees, and a hardware cost of 715, which some of them are, and most of them are around $700, but uh, some of them are even higher than that. Right now, you will be earning about $3, almost $3.90 after electricity, about $4.25 before electricity per day. Uh, and then your break even will be around 180 days, 184.09 days. So it is still a profitable card, but I wouldn't be, like me personally, I wouldn't build an entire mining rig out of the RX 6700 XT. I know some people already have, but honestly, this card to me um, and the RTX uh, 3060, we can just let the gamers have that, right? Because I'm really interested in specific cards, which I went over in a previous video of my, my top uh, GPUs for mining crypto in 2021 and 2020, uh, my, my choices still stand. I thought the 6700 XT was going to be a top performer, and it's not because uh, AMD handicapped uh, by using a 192-bit bus and, and a couple other architectural differences. But the 6700 XT is a decent card for somebody who is going to game and then wants to mine on the side to recoup their, their investment. That's a perfectly acceptable reason. Um, just I wouldn't build an entire farm out of these GPUs or an entire, you know, multi-rig setup out of these GPUs. That's just me, though. I want to hear your thoughts. So do me a favor, guys, on the way out, hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this, and definitely share your data. If you got an RX 6700 XT, uh, hit us up on Reddit or Voscoin Talk. Share your data, share your information with the community. And I appreciate all of you for taking the time to hang out with me today. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.